Hello and welcome to Trigonometry. I'm Francis Foster. I'm Constantin Kisson. And this is a show for you if you're bored with people arguing on the internet over subjects they know nothing about. At Trigonometry, we don't pretend to be the experts, we ask the experts. Our fantastic guest this week is a journalist and the author of The Great Betrayal, The True Story of Brexit. Rod Lill, welcome to Trigonometry. Thanks so much for asking me. Thank it's you. It's great to have you. Before I go on, this is the book. Make sure you get it. This is what we'll be talking about. Um, but before before we get into it, for anyone who doesn't know who you are, which is a small number of people these days, uh, just tell everybody, who are you? How are you where you are? What has been your journey through life? Because we always find that quite interesting. All oh, right. OK, sure. Uh, well, I'm a media whore um, <laughs> and I, uh, I'm a journalist, uh, a hack. Um, a columnist for the Sunday Times, a spectator in the Sun. Uh, I once was a speechwriter for the BBC. After that, I worked with a uh, uh, speechwriter for the BBC. There's a Freudian snake. Yeah, I was going to say. Speechwriter for the Labour Party. After that, I uh, worked for the BBC uh, and found the illusion between the two very easy indeed, uh, as you can imagine. Um, my point has always been to to say what I think people believe but are too scared to say for reasons of either direct political correctness or indirect political correctness. There's a slight difference between the two. And also to make people laugh. I mean most of my job is to is to is to amuse. Um, for that I usually get called a racist and a homophobe uh, because I have made jokes about black people before and indeed gay people. But I like to think of myself in a very real sense, as an equal opportunities cunt, <laughs> uh, as someone who will offend everybody, including you know the people I come from up in the northeast of England, um, uh, and people who live in Brighton, especially maybe people who live in Brighton, <laughs> um, uh, and French people, and everybody. You know, they are all in there. I don't think I think everybody has the right to have the piss taken out of them, uh, including me. I think that's a beautiful thing about the French in that people say you can't take the piss out of black people or gay people, but French, it's French, fair. it's yeah, fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fine, they deserve it. Yeah, except it changes. You know, it used to be like that about the Welsh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I tried that a couple of years ago. <laughs> Oh, oh, really? Oh, did, it, did it turn nasty? You've got to stop that, Boyle. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> they, they, they actually called the fucking police. <laughs> they, I, you know, it wasn't even, it was one of the least offensive things I've ever said in my life. I happened to mention that there was a paucity of vowels in the, in the Welsh language, which isn't a terribly original observation, <laughs> uh, nor a terribly funny one. And they went, do lally. Mm. And um, uh, the Welsh Language Society uh, said, uh, it's important we must stick to freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is the most important thing but. <laughs> so it's this fucking but. Yeah. We must stop people uh, generating hate about our language. Generating hate <laughs> about your fucking nog in the nog language. You, know, you carry on with it, Thomas, and your tank engine. Oh, that's Isle of Man, isn't it? Uh, well, well but, but, one Isle of Man view is now switched off. Yeah, well. Sorry about that. But, but one bloke, one bloke it was a, he actually reported to the police and said, can we investigate this to see if this is a race hate crime? Suggesting that there are not many vowels in the Welsh language. And the thing which struck me was that he was actually the police commissioner for North Wales. Oh, wow. wow. And, and he referred it. And presumably, you know, he should have been investigated for waste, wasting police time. Mm. I mean, I just... So, so be careful. Within a year or two, the French... <laughs> well, you'll not get away with the French. We'll be left with having to pick on tiny minority countries, you know. Well, like uh, Cape Verde or something. Yeah, yeah Cape, Cabo Verde. <laughs> Ca yeah, Cabo Verde. Um, yeah. You mispronounced the name and that's no, it. No, no, that's no, it, no. Well, that's, that's it, it for me. Yeah. You're that's off the job. Yeah. I quite like that you clarified that it was one specific Welshman because initially you said they called and I just had this image in my head of like the whole of Wales. Yeah. 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 No, but of course that's the point. <laughs> yeah. And of course that's the yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Because I got loads of letters in from people saying, from, from people in Carmarthen and Cardiff and Rill saying, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> when did we lose our sense of humour? <laughs> you know, mm. um... Um, so, no, it, of course not. It's that liberal elite with their vested interests who desperately desire a sense of victimhood. Mm. 
And I suppose they are victims because they're thick as shit. <laughs> uh, it's the important thing, I think. Well, we've started off with what we were going to talk about, about later. Uh, so sorry, why, sorry. Why, no, why, no, why don't we just carry on down this path and get yeah, to Brexit yeah, later? Fine, How about fine, that, Francis? Fine. Absolutely. So you you say you're an equal opportunities cunt, and when when, when you, and I read your articles in the Times, and I think they're incredibly funny. Has there ever been a point where you've made a joke that actually you look back on you think? I shouldn't have said that. That was too far over the line. No, uh, but there's been a, an occasion every week without fail where I look at something I've written and think, oh, in the current climate, I shouldn't have written that. Uh, I wonder if the subs will take it out or the editor will take it out. Um, and then I think, nah. You've got to do that. It, you, you, cannot, you cannot be constrained by this stuff. Otherwise, it makes you boring uh, and partisan. And I try not to be partisan in my offensiveness. You know, it's sprayed around liberally like Jimmy Savile would have sprayed around his seed. In the, in the, if I can conjure up that image. Uh, <laughs> which is an, a pleasant image. I mean, you're right. Uh, what happens actually is my wife reads my copy before I send it in um, with a glass of wine, and she reads through it. And she's she's for a quiet life. Mm. And she says, "Rod, you can't say this." And I said, "Why can't I? It's true. You know, it's true, and it's funny." What's they'll cut it out, and if they don't cut it out, the police will get involved. <laughs> and she's invariably right, but you cannot stop doing that. And yet, it is getting more and more the case that you self police, it gets less funny. Uh, it's, it's, it's more and more the case every week that goes by. I thought we were at something, I mentioned this on a different program before now, I thought that maybe last year we were at something called peak wank. Mm. Um, nah, it's still, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. And do, do you think there's going to be a backlash? Because I talk a lot with comedians, we both do. And w when you look at something like Dave Chappelle has released this new special. <laughs> Chappelle, <and> sure. <laughs> isn't, isn't it Chappelle? <laughs> Uh, no, I thought, well, it's Chappelle. I, 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 Chappelle. I, I heard him refer to himself as Chappelle, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course there is. Of course there's, there's that. And on the other side, there's Stuart Lee, who, you know, I can remember Stuart Lee ruffling a few feathers by saying that, <laughs> what's he called? That guy from uh, uh, the driving program that people used Jeremy to watch. Jeremy Clarkson. Jeremy May. Well, and Peter was. Hammond. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hammond, Peter Hammond, Hammond. Hammond. That, that, yeah. yeah, Richard Hammond. Richard, Richard Hammond. Hammond. <laughs> yes, that is. Peter Hammond. Sorry. Peter, who's that? I don't Albert know. Hammond. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, 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 that he wished he'd died or his children yeah. were yeah. blind yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good comedy. Yeah. Which is good comedy. And comedy coming from the left and driven from the left. Um, from the liberal left, I, I wouldn't call it the proper left. I mean, he's a, another fucking public schoolboy when it comes down to it. Brilliant though he is, um, I think you guys are at the forefront of it. I mean, you, I mean Constantine, you're the one who has to sign a five-page document mm -hmm. when you go on stage uh, at a university because there are so many things which now are not considered to be funny. Mm. And if I may say so, you may get away with slightly more than I. Because you come from a from what is called a B B M B M E B. -M -E. Yeah, I don't self-identify as B M E though. Yeah, but you are, mate. I identify you as one of them. Well, I would just. Well, doubt maybe it. I should do this because that would definitely get me a lot further in my yeah, career. Yeah. It would get you. It would yeah. get you a lot further. Yeah. But uh, but also but but of course counting against you is that of course you're Jewish. Yeah. Uh, and I don't say that lightly either. Mm. Uh, and, and so, no, you guys are more at the front of it than I am. I mean... But, you know, in Francis' question, this is, I think, what he's getting at in terms of the backlash. Like, I did a show about that contract this, this year at Edinburgh, and it did very, very well uh, with the public and with a lot of reviews. I obviously got a lot of, you know, The Guardian and all these people slammed it. But uh, I got a lot did of... Did they that twat Brian 
Brian, yeah. Brian yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> One star. <Yeah. laughs> well, well, I wish he'd given me a one star. What he did is actually he went to see all the non-woke comedians. Yeah, and yeah. instead of giving us a review, he did a whole write-up in which essentially he he wouldn't actually give any of us a review. He just made a few comments about this everybody. This is a man who knows nothing about comedy. Mm. He's a theatre He does critic. not have a single humorous vein in his body. <laughs> so it's like Margaret Thatcher being a comedy critic. Mm. But, uh, sorry, go on. So, um, but what my point is that those of us, me, Leo, Jeff Norcott, uh, uh, Andrew Doyle, who you might know, who's yeah. the creator of yeah. Titania yeah. McGrath, we all did pretty well, right? So when Francis is asking you about the backlash, do you sense that maybe the peak wank point is coming? Well, no, I mean, in a sense, the reason I don't think there's a backlash, I, I think the people are with us. Mm. I don't have. I think these people who try to stop us and what we say have power without hegemony. Their, their views are not shared by the, the majority of people in the country remotely. Mm. Uh, I, 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 but they I, are I, shared by the BBC commissioning team, and they are shared, shared by, by the, the Channel elite. Four. Right, they're shared by the liberal elite, yeah. and the people who dictate, mm. the, as you, the words you use, the current climate. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? I had a, I heard a story only yesterday on the BBC. This is kind of where they're coming from. This is Radio Five Live, uh, and it was about some uh, uh, lesbians having a night out, a nice night out. I think it was in Leeds. And a vicious hate crime had been committed, which the police were reluctant to follow up. And Radio 5 Live got themselves very worked up on it. You, you found out what exactly had happened. And some drunk bloke shouted, hello, is this a fat homosexual contingent then? That was it. Mm. It's not a hate crime. And I think when that is broadcast, with this sense of outrage. It's a horrible thing to say. Mm. Well, it's not horrible. It's nasty. It's, it's pig ignorant. Mm. But it's, it's not, you know, get in the cattle vans, is it? You know. When that is broadcast as being something about which we should be viscerally outraged, I think the public listen to that and think, what? I, I don't think they are anywhere near where the BBC is. On this issue, you know, I, I just don't think they. I think, and this is where it comes into Brexit, mm. where Brexit comes into the picture, which is that there is such a disconnect between this liberal elite and the country, uh, between Parliament and the country, but also between the judiciary, the BBC, the civil service, and what we consider the rest of the country. It's, there's just no shared common view of the world. They're at odds with each other. Um, I think they'd go along to your gigs and laugh. I think, I know that they laugh at the stuff I write. Apart from the man yesterday in Canterbury Station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoyed reading a Facebook update about that. Yeah, I sent it to Francis, we both laughed. Well, it's absolutely true. Sometimes. So you just tell everybody what happened? Just well, some, well I, I go into London sometimes and uh, as, as infrequently as possible. Uh, and people will come up and say, I really love your stuff. Thank you. Please keep writing it. Um, and that'll be maybe four out of five. But one person will always walk by and go, cunt. Um, and that's fine. Uh, Yesterday at the Canterbury station, I was buying a ticket and a youngish bloke walked by and he just turned to me and went, racist, in that ovine way that they have. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it's so intent was he in delivering this judgment that he failed to notice a large door in front of him <laughs> and smashed into it, smashed his face into it and smashed his arm on the handle. And I just heard him go, ah! <laughs> I just stood there... If, if it had been appropriate, I would have masturbated his <laughs> uh, but it, Would that uh, have been peak wank? <laughs> that would have been peak wank. Well, that would have really been peak wank. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed reading that because uh, the instant karma moments, they are enjoyable. But, it, well, but it's, uh, it, it happens quite a bit. Two other occasions in London, both in London. One was when I was getting on, the, on, on, on a tube at Stratford, and it was quite crowded. Tube was about to go, doors were about to shut. And there was this uh, black lady with two carrier bags. 
and she couldn't, and the doors were about to shut. I held the doors open for her, took one of the bags and helped her onto the train. And a bloke sitting down nearby said, I wouldn't have expected you to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant this. I mean, just yeah. utterly bizarre. And there was one other. I was walking with, uh, I was having lunch with Inia Bunglawala, who was at the time uh, the number two or three in the Muslim Council of Britain. Mm. We were having a, a lunch to talk about, you know, Islam and stuff. And, so, and I've known him for years. And we were crossing a busy road in, in uh, I think, uh, I think it was Hoban area, crossing a very busy road. And a woman ran through the traffic from one of the pavements and, and ran up to him and tucked on in the sleeve and said, you know who that is, don't you? <laughs> Just, uh, so there is this minority mm. which which, you know, hangs on its every word. Mm. You know, the Owen Jones, the people with the IQ of Owen. <laughs> uh, uh, but I think the vast majority of the public just thinks this is uh, an annoying diversion from what we should be talking about. You know, at, at the last election, a bit of polling's been done in the States. Um, political correctness was a really, really big reason why Donald Trump won. Uh, so congratulations, USA. <laughs> well done. <laughs> You've got Donald. Uh, and, you know, so when you talk about a backlash, I think people are averse to it. Um, I don't think they, uh, but whether it's a backlash, I think they've always been averse to it. They're sick of it. Uh, how that expresses itself in the end politically is a more difficult thing to talk about. Cause, mm. But to my mind, if you've got this whole raft of people who are the people who go to university, who are the people who go to Oxford and Cambridge, and you're never going to get rid of them. You're it's never... very difficult. It's it... very difficult. How are we going to do it? We're talking about Gramsci and the march through the institutions. Yes. We're talking a bit about Herbert Marcuse. Um, it is very, very difficult. I can tell you how we do it in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are some occasions where Russia has a point. Mm. Not many, but the BBC, for example, is a, it's, a, it's a good example. The BBC has done a brilliant job in the last 20 years of becoming more diverse ethnically. Um, when I joined the BBC, you would uh, broadcasting house, you would go through seven floors of exclusively white people till you got to the canteen on the eighth floor when it was all black. Mm. You know, that's changed, and it's good that it's changed. It's good. Could we not try some sort of legislation to ensure that there's diversity of opinion? Should it not be necessary for our big news and current affairs programmes to have a kind of broad sweep of opinion on there? Particularly given that we all pay for them. Given that we all pay for them. You know, that they should be encouraged to have diversity of opinion rather than this monolithic culture which it has at the moment. I don't, I don't see that's a problem. Now, what do you do about universities? Can you do the same thing? I think you probably can. And the universities thing, universities have always tended to the left, generally. Um, but, as we know from the statistics, they've become more and more left-wing. It's now somewhere in the region 95%, I think, that, uh, in, in the US that it's Democrat. Um, a few things have, have, have fed into that. One of them is the fact that so many people go to university now to do utterly fucking fatuous degrees, <laughs> almost always in social sciences. Yep. That's been the big growth area. Wank. <laughs> Gallons of wank, which will cost these poor kids 40,000 quid, you know, to come away from the Queen Mary University or the University of Westminster. <laughs> University of Westminster with a degree in gender wank <laughs> and think they're going to walk gender into wank. a top job. Um, you, you know, so, so some of the, but I, I think it's far harder. I mean, it would be more interesting to, to, to deal with the teachers as well because that's another area where, again, there is heading towards close to unanimity of opinion. 
And I, I spoke to a lad who um, quoted him in the book, who voted Leave, you know, um, and he was a teacher at a school in London. And the hatred he got from colleagues, I mean, just incomprehensible hatred. Yeah. You know, I, how, do, how the fuck do you attack that? How do you stop that? There was a headmaster of a school in Dulwich who said that if any people in his school said anything similar to what Donald Trump had been saying about immigration, they would be expelled, excluded. I mean, we, this is mad, you know. And I don't know what you do about that. I mean, close down the fucking teacher training colleges. You know, just what the fuck do they learn there? You know? Uh, and I think... The growth of some of the free schools is an antidote to that. Mm. Mm. Well, you know? we've had Catherine Burble sing on the show. Mm. Uh, well, Catherine Burble sing should be our education policy should be dictated by Catherine Burble sing and Tony Sewell. Mm. Mm. We've had them both on. Yeah, Tony is Tony is a great mate and a lovely bloke. Um, and he would make a brilliant education secretary. So would Catherine. That's what you need. Mm. Yeah, and just get rid of this flaccid self-serving and contradictory toss that the kids are taught at the moment. Because this is a great thing about, and it's why liberalism's falling apart, that these identity politics, politics stuff, is, it's all mutually contradictory. Yeah. And it falls apart. You tug at the one little thread of it and it falls apart like a mohair jumper knitted by the village idiot. You know, <laughs> <it> just, <laughs> like that. Which we saw with the protests in Birmingham about uh, sex education in schools. Yeah. Yeah. Who do we stick up for? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's is hilarious. it the gays? Is it the Muslims it the who, who Muslims? comes out on top? Yeah. And it's it's interesting because I'm a former teacher. I was a teacher for eleven years. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> all right. It's all right, Rod. But no. But one thing I found very interesting is how identity politics has actually started to infect teacher training. Yeah. So, for instance, we went to a course, and one of them was about how to teach black boys. Why? That and then you had to treat them differently. No, and, and you see, this is where Tony Sewell would change the world. Mm. And the thing is, I'm sitting there going, "Well, this is just basically racism," because you're looking at somebody yeah. and you're not actually thinking, you know, what their capabilities are, how academic no. they are. You're thinking they're black. You're thinking they're black. They're male. Therefore, we have to treat them differently. Yeah. That is two, racism. Two, two, two things on that. I mean, you're absolutely right. It's racist. Um, Tony once picked up on it. Uh, a long time ago, it's when he first came, when I first noticed a guy, um, when there was a kind of sea coal mania. I don't know if you remember it, but it was a time when Mary Seacole, yeah. every building in Britain had to be named Sea Coal House mm. because here was a black woman who would be an aspirational figure for black students. And Tony said, Why should they aspire to be a fucking nurse? <laughs> <laughs> what? Just because she's got black skin. Yeah. Why shouldn't they aspire to be Faraday or Shakespeare? Yeah. Why do they, why, why? It's, it's, all of this stuff is racist. Yeah. It is racist. It is, it is, it is letting down, you know, a community which could have so much more to aspire to than this and corralled into this perpetual state of victimhood I, 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 it just it, I cannot it's be, crippling it's, it's crippling, crippling because yeah. what you're saying is that you will never be capable of doing what yeah, all the other right. children are that's capable right. of that's right therefore because we need to put in special provisions for yeah, you that's and right. it's also a form of narcissism because it's Look what I'm a good person. Yes, look how no, that's right. It's virtue signaling. Yeah, yes, look, that's right. And but we're also doing it with boys. We we had one tr training session where we had a teacher training person come in, tell us how boys couldn't be expected to write at a desk for longer than 15 minutes. They needed to have a break. And it's it's what? just yeah. And then you know they have to use small targets in order to keep them engaged. And it's bollocks. I, I have to, I have huge problems with my, my daughter's at a grammar school. She passed her eleven plus, uh, of course. I mean, she's got my genes. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, the identity politics and the propaganda is now in kinda every subject apart from maths and physics. Mm. It's in geography, English, it's everywhere. When you study Of Mice and Men by Steinbeck, you are asked, uh, 
What does this tell us about sexism in 1950s, 1930s, 1940s? Mm. You know, nothing about the book. It's, it's, mm. about, it's all corralled into the, to this, this monomaniacal uh, hierarchy of victimhoods. And it's, it's terribly debilitating. But as I say, I mean, the good news is it is falling apart. You know, believe me, the transgender stuff, um, the fury of the lesbian community and the feminist community, and to an increasing degree, the male gay community, it's all beginning to fall apart at the edges. Because, of course, it has to. Because you can't build a world like that where it's all about competing victimhoods. It's, it's an absurdity. Why do you think it has been so tremendously successful? Do you think it's because we are naturally wired for empathy and so when someone claims victimhood, we are naturally drawn mm. to go, oh, well, you feel bad, therefore I, I, I should try and take your concerns into account, even if they're not necessarily based in reality in certain instances? Do you think that's it? I think that may be why some people, that's a good explanation of why some well-meaning middle-class people may feel that. But I think that most of it devolves from the notion that um, the capitalism is bad, which it may be, uh, that it's run by white males who are therefore bad, that it, the, the Cold War comes into it, political alignment comes into it, basically that we are the white oppressive state and everyone else is de facto subjugated. I mean, I remember back in 1983, 84, uh, beginning to see this. I think that's when it began, late 70s, early 80s, um, when the National Union of Journalists were advised by the Commission for Racial Equality that henceforth, henceforth Chinese people should be described as being black. <laughs> I was on the far left at this point, and I thought, what the fuck? <laughs> and... In various places around London and Manchester, various people were going, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they really weren't happy about that. Yeah. You know, or the but, Chinese, but is, is, yeah, the don't Chinese. see them enjoying no. that. That was no. a Chinese <laughs> accent. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a Chinese, come on. I, you know, I'm a writer, I don't, I'm trying to perform. Um, but, it, but this was an attempt, and it's, it's, it's the root of it all to say that the Chinese people are objectively black because they are subjects of an oppressive white uh, state. And everybody, and, and it's why Peter Tatchell, who I respect as a guy enormously and get on with terribly well, uh, will sometimes say to me, Muslims and gay people ought to try and make common cause against the oppression which they suffer in society. Right. I wouldn't go up any tall buildings. <laughs> I'd just keep it on the ground floor. The fuck? I like Peter. We've had him on Peter's the show. He's very idealistic. Guy. He is very idealistic. Which he's, is one of the reasons he's done what he's you know, done. Yeah. Is, right? And he's very moral yeah. and a Super good moral. guy. Yeah. You know, and he was the guy who stood up for <laughs> the Irish bakers, mm. the Northern yeah. Irish bakers. You know, mm. he believes in freedom of speech. He is a good man. But there is this blind spot. You know, we are all victims. We are all victims. You're a victim, mm. you know. You kind of aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> well, you see, that's the thing, because my mum's from Venezuela, so actually I'm a is fuck. She really? Yeah, she fucking is. Yeah, you can drink now, but as a trigonometry, I mention it every episode. Do you really? Yeah, 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 yeah really. absolutely. Is she a Chavez fan? No, she fucking hates him. Does she really? Yeah, Trump yeah. Fan. yeah, she loves Trump because Trump yeah. is the only one who's actually doing yeah, something yeah, about yeah, Venezuela yeah. and so Maduro. So she's a middle-class Venezuela. Yeah, man. absolutely. But, yeah, yeah, but she, she despises, you know. But it's that thing of what we are all victims. We're all victims. Yeah, and and it's it, the other fascinating thing. If you've got time to talk about this, yeah, yeah, yeah the other let's fascinating go for it. thing. It's a bit like with charities that you begin by saying that you're a victim, that these people in society are victims. And you set up charities, you set up legislation. Mm. Charities begin to work for legislation. Mm. Legislation is enacted to protect those people. Yeah. But it becomes an industry. And what always happens is that it expands. 
<laughs> so that, for example, with disability, at one point, there is absolutely no question that disabled people in this country had a really, really bad run of it. Hmm. Probably still do in many cases. They do, actually, yeah. Because my mum's disabled. But, but, but fuck your mum for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is my so, favourite moment of two months. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, a guest finally <laughs> says what I've been meaning to say for a very long time. But <laughs> <laughs> well, what happens yeah. is, uh, and it's the same with gay stuff as yeah. well, it's no longer enough to say that this is a persecuted minority. Yeah. It's then it, you have to say, actually, it's not a minority. Mm. Did you know that one in three people are disabled? Well, no, they're not. Yeah. But that's what the disabled the disability lobby will tell you. Yeah. Um, and there are now invisible disabilities. And people who are depressed will mm. get free parking. Did you know that? No. Oh, yes. Free parking for people who are depressed. We're all fucking depressed, <laughs> are we not? But, but it's the same with the gay lobby as well, which is undoubted um, uh, horrible uh, discrimination. But it's not enough. Uh, well, no, no, it's, it's, we don't just want to, that means it's one in three people are gay or one in four people. No, they're not. Mm. You know, you don't have to do that. But that's what we've done with all of this stuff. It, it, it expands exponentially. Until we are all victims, we can all be disabled if we want to be. I could register as disabled now, you know? My eyesight's not brilliant. Um, I'm from Middlesbrough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fat cunt. <laughs> you know, we could all register now. Uh, and that's what we've done. We're trying to make everyone victims. It's bizarre. It is bizarre. And... Because I was going to move on to no, talking no, I about... I was just going to say, uh, th I'm curious still to, f to, to prod you more on why you think that idea of victimhood has been so successful, because that is a, 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 a huge transformation. Because we like being victims. But, but here's the thing, right, is 40 or 50 years ago, we had an aspirational culture. You were, you were taught to be strong, particularly if you were a man. You were taught to be strong. You were taught to be resilient. Mm. You were taught that your yeah. job as a human being is to face the challenges that yes. life throws at you. The movies that we would watch, the Sylvester Stallone in Rocky, yeah, yeah. saying life hits harder than anything you ever yeah. imagined, but it's about keeping going. We were going. being conned by a culture. We were being conned back then by a, by a paternalistic, patriarchal, fascistic <laughs> <laughs> culture. We, we, we were, that's what mm. they will tell you. Mm. But I think there's also something appealing in, in that we are all victims. Mm. I think everybody likes it. There's power. There's power, there's power in it. And, and also cachet. Yeah. You know, my daughter's school, you know, uh, as soon as you start talking about transgenderism or pansexuality or grey sexuality and all the other sexualities they are, they're all signing up for them. <laughs> you know, I'm different, I'm, I'm, I'm like that. Mm. Whereas I, at school, when I was trying to be different, would strip naked and stand like Jesus Christ in front of people and scream that they were <laughs> going to be sent to hell. <laughs> uh, which I thought actually took a bit of doing. Yeah. You know, just identifying as something. You know. Suddenly your career makes a lot of sense. Doesn't it, isn't it also an easy get out and saying, I'm yes. not responsible for my yes, actions. that's right. Oh, it's a condition syndrome as well. Yeah. Everything is a condition. Mm. ADHD and, I mean, the, the two obvious ones are ADHD and dyslexia. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's very, very difficult to tell the difference between, scientifically, between someone who's dyslexic and someone, middle class mum and dad, <laughs> who's sick. Children <laughs> <laughs> are sick. <laughs> And similarly for the, you know, ADHD. No, you're a little cunt, basically. <laughs> yeah. Just... Yeah. Um, Francis, is that not the case with you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Take, take, take. Is there more wine or are we finished? <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you were wondering why there's so much swearing in this episode, we, unlike with other guests who we get a cup of tea or a coffee, we got rather a glass of wine, hence the ensuing chaos. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't know there was no swearing. No, he, he, we, we, I, you I, can mate, swear I'm just joking. Especially about your mum, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? My mum is actually a massive fan of yours. I will put that Shit. clip <laughs> and send it to her. <laughs> like, she'd love that. 
that. But, um, we, we are out of time, man. Are we out of time? We are out of time. Oh, God. So, I, wanted, I wanted to get him to slam Corbin. I fucking hate him. Anyway. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I'm Jewish. I'm up for that. Yeah, so it's not time. difficult, is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Come Come on. On. <laughs> I'm half Venezuelan. He loves Madhuwara. Come on, just slam him for me. He was honest and decent on Brexit for a while. Against his better interests. He was principled. He's thick as shit. I mean, we know this. <laughs> it was too easy at A-level, Jesus. Yeah, sure. Uh, but also, I mean, th there's, th there is no imagination or... I don't think he's read properly. I don't think he reads things. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's an indulgence. His existence in the Labour Party was an indulgence. Much as I was indulgent in... 1976 when I joined the Socialist Workers' Party. I knew at 16 that we weren't going to hand out weapons at ICI and take over the country. Mm. You know, it was a bit of fun. All that lot are stuck in that pre-adolescent mindset. It is, it is astonishing. Simon Evans has this great joke in his new show where he talks about how... Um... He, he talks about all the different politicians and makes fun of both sides. And then he goes with Jeremy Corbyn, of course, he started in student politics, where he remains to this day. Well, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it. I mean, it is just... And it's the, it's the fucking affluent who fall for it. Mm. That being said, I know quite a lot of people in London, and I try to work this out psychologically, who vote for Jeremy Corbyn and then pray he doesn't get in. You know... That that is kind of the lefty virtue signalling writ large, isn't it? Mm. You know. Mm. Well, on that happy note, Rod, uh, we've got just one more question for you. Yeah. Which is, what is the one thing that no one's talking about that we ought to be talking about? Uh, animal rights. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm 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 so sorry. I'm really really dull on animal rights. They're going to have to cut this. Um, I think animal rights are, 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 is one of the big issues. Uh, there's two things. There's rights for working class people who I don't class in the same group as animals. Uh, um, from myself. I thought about was, making that joke, but yeah, I was like, no, no, yeah, yeah, I yeah, better not. Yeah, but you did it. Fantastic. I have no reserves. That's the problem with that. um, so there's two things. I think we need identity politics for the working class, and I also think we need to. Uh, I think we need to clamp down on the abuse of uh, uh, animals raised for food. And if anyone ever suggests bringing back a fox hunting bill, they should actually be shot uh, through the head uh, with a kind of bolt gun or a rail gun. If you've seen any rail guns. <laughs> um, so those two things, those, those are two things. I'm just curious. Probably. So you think we need identity politics for the working class rather than just moving away from identity politics in general? I was being a bit flippant, oh, okay. but by and large... That's the one identity which is never identity. No, it isn't. It isn't. Yeah. But my, my point is I think we need to remove identity politics yeah, as a sure, thing. Sure, rather sure. Than, of course you do. Yeah. Of course you do. You do it on economics. Yeah. yeah. I just think uh, one concern for me with identity politics is it pushes people who are not represented by it into their own identity. And then you suddenly get, you know, 10 million straight white men going, oh, yeah, well, we are d discriminated against because we're straight white men. That's not going to end very well. No, but that will happen. Well, yeah. that's my point. Yeah. That, that will happen. Yeah. Which is no, why no, I sure. don't think we need sure, that. No, sure, sure. I, I mean, it's actually a quote from Morris, uh, when I, uh, Morris Glassman. Mm. Um, he says, you know, the Labour Party has all this identity politics, but none of it about the people it was set up to represent. Yeah. And that, that's roughly yeah. where I'm from. That's it. Which is why you should vote for the Social Democrats. That camera's not on me, is it? <laughs> it's probably another one. We switched one, it off a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a drink now? Yes, yeah, 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 we're yes. going to have you a drink, Rod. <laughs> we're so keeping I'm... all of this in. Yeah. Uh, Rod, thanks so much, for, so much for coming on. Uh, check out Enjoy Rod's it. columns. As you can see, he's uh, an edgy and very funny man uh, with some very good ideas. Uh, as always, follow us, because uh, you're not on social media. I know this for a fact, right? Twitter. Facebook? Yeah, or fo yeah uh, follow Facebook. Rod on Facebook. He's pretty active on there. Uh, Should I be on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, yeah. you'd get cancelled very quickly, which would be great for your career. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what being cancelled is? 
kicked off because I'm... No, no, being cancelled is like where people start calling for you to be removed from your newspaper, yeah. not being allowed to, to write anymore. Like well, all they that. do that already. Yeah, but on Twitter, th that would be a lot better. So you should definitely yeah. get on it. OK, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when Rod gets on Twitter, follow him on Twitter. Uh, as always, follow us at TriggerPod on all the social media. Uh, we're going to do a very quick outro and we will see you in a week from now. Absolutely. See you soon, guys. Thanks for watching guys. As always, subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the bell button next to the subscribe button so you get notified when a video comes out and follow us on all the social media at TriggerPod. And also leave us a nice review on iTunes and spread the word.